Hello, and welcome to a particularly dystopian episode of Three from the Seven. My name is Rafaela Kenny Sincata. I am the associate editor of Relics Magazine, and coming to us from an undisclosed location via like on screen chat. Karina, what's up? What's up, Rav? These are uh, these are the crazy times, right? Did you ever think it would come to this? Probably not. But this is we're making uh, lemonade out of the lemons we've been given, and uh, I'm very happy that we can you know continue a semblance of normalcy <laughs> um, in these ways. So nice to see it. How are nice you? To see you too. I'm good. I am broadcasting from my childhood home here in Long Island. If you're watching the video version, we were in the Palm Lounge. It's my the bar my parents have. Um, and you are clearly in. A, if you're watching the video version at home, Karina is clearly in some sort of catacomb deep in the yeah. in the depths of upstate New York. It's a uh, candle lit bunker, and uh, you know maybe I'll take you on a tour later. But it's uh, hand painted and textiled, and you know I feel very comfortable doing my work from here as opposed to in the sunlight like a normal person. <laughs> so just got to keep it in the bunker, you know what I mean? And uh, <laughs> feels good, feels right, it feels really great. Um, I'm here with some dear friends of mine. And, uh, you know, actually I've been coming to this house quite some time and I remember like being here for Hurricane Irene, the one like pre Sandy that people thought was like, that's why nobody took Sandy seriously. I don't know if you remember that. I do. But yeah. Irene kind of came and we were like, holy shit. Like the news made it seem like it was going to be some horrible thing. And it was like rather mild. And I was here for that. And we had like the eye of the storm jam. And it was like a whole thing. Anyway, I've uh, locked some time here and it's uh, very grateful to, you know, have a safe bunker to uh, chat with you from. So so what day did you kind of make it up there? And was your departure from New York frantic or chill? I imagine you just like grabbing instruments off the wall and just being like. I actually, well, yeah, my dear friends brought some instruments, but I had a bass at Marco Benevento's house up here, which is not far. Um, so we went over to pick up my uh, 68 Fender Mustang, which is a beautiful bass that we have. And yeah, I mean, it was it was not chill per se, but it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't completely hysterical, you know. Like I feel like it, all of this is so uncertain that you could only kind of take it a day at a time, anyway. You know what I mean? Like we're just kind of I don't know. On, we came up on Friday and we just you know, put a bunch of food and clothing and like, you know, we kind of packed our bags and uh, we put them in Marlo's car and we just got up here in two hours or whatever. And we don't know how long it's going to last, but we have a lot of food. We have, you know, a lot of instruments. Uh, Is someone there like chefing it up? Like who's your chef? We're all chefing it up. It's kind of amazing, except for Johnny, who can't cook. Um, <laughs> the rest of us, I mean, like, you know, last night, Isaac made an amazing vegetable curry. I made Ooh. a um, ka, coconut, you know, chicken soup, Thai style. Uh, Nathan, Isaac's brother. I hope you meet these people. <laughs> he <laughs> his sous vide all this steak. We have a million. Oh, you guys have sous vide. Oh, my oh, Lord. Oh, yeah, we're sous vide. Oh, the French art of sous vide. Oh, exactly. Wow. You should see it. I'll send you a video of that, too. It's great. We got rosemary, thyme, fresh garlic from the garden. We're really trying to, you know, make uh, make the best of this. <laughs> yeah, I think it's the name of the game is making lemonade out of lemons. I am upgraded from my very small kitchen in my Brooklyn apartment back to my mom's kitchen here in Long Island. I got four gas burners going. I made a delicious yeah. garlic and oil pasta last night. Oh, ah! it's the best. Just like a Manona used to make, like a <laughs> Oh, that's beautiful. And what are yeah. you cooking today? What do you got on the on the docket for today? That's a good question. I don't know what we're cooking today. Maybe some sausage and peppers with some Beyond sausage. My mother is a vegetarian, so we go veg most of the time while I'm here. But uh, some sausage right. and peppers, vegetarian style, uh, any of that type of stuff. But Karina, what type of media are you guys consuming to stay sane? I know a lot of people are looking for things to read, to watch to keep us through these weird times where we're all very alone yet together. Yes, it is a very strange time in that regard. Uh, you know, we watched the Democratic debate, which was uh, not, you know, I wouldn't recommend watching that every day for, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's a good thing to do, but you know what I mean? And we've been watching like Curb Your Enthusiasm. We watched a little Futurama last night nice. I, and some, you know, very stupid Adam Sandler comedies from the mid 2000s. I feel like that 
It's just what the doctor <laughs> ordered in this time. He's watching Little Nicky. <laughs> We're watching, you know, Mr. Deeds, Anger Management, if you haven't seen it. Like, a terrible, like, these are all just, you know, flicks set in New York, which we're all city kids. We love, uh, you know, things that remind us of a place that we just vacated for God knows how long. And, uh, you know, that one is a Adam Sandler meets uh, Jack Nicholson. Great flick. So awesome. good. So, yeah, it's great. It's all good. And then, you know, I'm telling you, we're, we've been jamming to uh, pass the time. We've gone live a few times on my Instagram. And, you know, I haven't been, I never, like, I straight up have never gone live in that way, you know, but I'll just hit, you know, and I won't announce it. I won't be like, yo, it's 6 p.m. We're going live. I'm like, yo, guys, let's have a jam. And they're like, <laughs> And we have uh, somebody playing like electronic drums on the OP1, which is a great device for these strange times. You can do just about everything on it as a, like so many synth capabilities and it's a sequencer and a four track recorder and it's a great thing, but somebody can play live drums on it or just like That's awesome. loops and whatnot. And then two guitars and bass and we just, uh, we just be making it rain. We played to 600 people last night and I've gone a oh, lot wow. of messages being like, uh, not at one time, not at one time, but uh, overall, like over the course of, I think, 45 minutes, we had 600 viewers or so, which was really cool. And uh, a lot of positive messages and like, you know, it's a good way for at least for me, I live to perform, you know, and uh, it's fun to connect with people in that way where I'm like, oh, my God, this guy, when's the next time I'll see you? Who knows? But I'm like <laughs> so glad to see your name pop up. You know what I mean? Like that type of thing is kind of uh, is the vibe. What's the podcast? The Joy of Sex? Uh, <laughs> Dying for Sex is the podcast, uh, other than this one, that we highly recommend. And it's about <laughs> a woman who... Marlo, why don't you come over here, actually? Hey. Tell her, oh, Miss Marlo from start. the band yes. Melt. Come on hey. over. New single this week. Yes. Friday. So I've been listening to a podcast called Dying for Sex, which is about a woman diagnosed... It's horrible. Um, she has a terminal disease. <laughs> but I listened to it before the coronavirus took over the whole world. So listening to it back in my old life last week, I was like, oh, my God, just what a crazy story. She gets diagnosed with terminal breast cancer and gets all these cancer drugs that have somehow increased her libido exponentially and goes on all these crazy sex debates. <laughs> so... It kind of is a metaphor for us right now <laughs> in a big way, which I didn't realize back in my old life. Um, I just listened to this podcast leisurely, but now I'm like, holy shit. Now that we're all like exposed to this new thing and kind of trying to deal with whatever, like who knows what good can come out of it for all of us in terms of like what we create and what we do. So, That's true. So that podcast has taken on a new meaning for me from entertainment to <laughs> and that's yeah. true that's poetry lust for life you know the lady's lust for life her that she gets life. like through her increased libido she and talks just going about crazy crazy things foot stuff kicking people in the balls walking up oh the a very entertaining podcast to pass the time and perhaps inspire you right <laughs> is it is it just six of you in one room just like dead silent just like listening to this podcast this like i'll blast through. it and they're like marlo you know <laughs> guys you need to listen but yeah shout out to that podcast from this podcast right it's just great <laughs> back to korea <laughs> oh thanks marlo that was great oh, yeah. marlo shank from great the band class. melt okay. oh, oh what a, a crown just Thank as you. it should be. Hey. Yeah, Karina's in a full-blown Game of Thrones like cosplay right now. <laughs> Maybe in a crowd. We've slowly been losing our minds, but not terribly. And just uh, you know, the only answer is doing crazy, stupid shit like this. So. I told Karina that we're all gonna listen back to this podcast one day and be like, "Holy shit, we were out of our minds." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is a great um, relic for this moment in time. I it feel is. like so. It's like oh, it's is now. it a relic? From relics. Uh, oh, Raph, too much about us. What media are you consuming to stay, you know, right? I am. I am watching a bunch of movies, listening to a bunch of albums, reading a bunch of books that I've been meaning to consume but never had the time to. I watched Blade Runner for the first time, which I mentioned to you before we started recording. Um, it's an amazing movie from the '80s. If anybody hasn't watched it, it's uh, starring Harrison Ford. 
It's about androids and what it means to be human. Um, it is fantastic and definitely a dystopian, but a different dystopia than we're living in now, which is almost right. refreshing. Um, I am also reading this phenomenal book called Into the Never. It is about Nine Inch Nails' uh, in, uh, recording of the Downward Spiral, uh, which oh, is super awesome. God. I know. I'm getting into the weeds of the recording of Nine Inch Nails. I'm obsessed with Nine Inch Nails. It's my one like non-deadhead thing that I'm super into. Uh, <laughs> So that's cool. And it's also written by a philosophy professor instead of like a music person. So it dives deep into like questions of morality and faith and all of these things. And I'm just like, you know, pondering while staring out the window. Uh, awesome. I'm on the lighter side of things, I've started watching Gilmore Girls again, which I'm sure people are going to roast me for, but no, it's that's still good. So great. Oh my God. I love that. It's like mad funny. Like I was with my older brother and he was like, yeah, I started watching Gilmore Girls. And I was like, Dude, when we were younger, he would like roast me for watching that, but it has since rekindled my love for Gilmore Girls. And it's like what you're saying, uh, kind of like what Marlo was saying, like th this pre-corona world, it's nice to like watch things from before <laughs> or listen to right. things from before and really just like is. soak them in. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh my God. So did you family? forget anything? Oh, yeah. uh, wait, sorry. <laughs> no, no problem. Did I forget anything? Was that the question? Yeah. Uh, I brought three pairs of underwear for um, the next God knows how long. Oh God, Marga, Marla, that's so bad. That's that's a <laughs> bit know. of a shame. Uh, I couldn't find any. I mean, yeah, I, I just I had a backpack to like I have like three sweaters, a sweatshirt, a, a bunch of underwear, two pairs of pants, <laughs> one <laughs> pair of shoes, just yes. like, Nike running shoes. Because we yeah, I did one pair of shoes, which was my big mistake. I literally yeah. like got home with a ton of clothes books everything i needed and i was just like oh my god i brought one pair of shoes <laughs> oh dude no i feel pretty good about my pack other otherwise i have you know the laptop i have a microphone for recording like i hope to work on some demos i've been working on and like flush out a bunch of tunes that would be a great use of this fucked up time <laughs> and uh oh i'm reading the trendiest book of all time uh trick mirror really phenomenal i don't know if you've heard of this by i forget her name gia something or other and she's killing it it's a bunch of vignettes on uh reflections on self-delusion which is great and i just like wish that it had been written you know six months from now because i'd love to hear her take on this crazy shit um it's like about the rise of the internet and then she has a chapter on like ecstasy and another one on uh you know like billy mcfarland scamming everybody with firefast and one about like the act of she was on a reality show when she was a kid and like you know grappling with what it was like then and then what it's like now to watch herself perform that anyway it's some crazy cool shit so i recommend that <laughs> yeah. everybody's watching it i mean reading it um but yeah, I don't know. I feel I feel pretty well stocked here. We're doing good. We, you know, it's uh, it's tough to get city kids to like slow down. And I know you're now you're a Brooklynite at this point, right? So like, yeah. I don't know. I'm just like really getting used to not being like, oh shit, like walk outside and the world is like. Oh, now I'm just yeah. like, all right, it's just still in calm up here and I'm wearing crowns and shit. Um <laughs> I think the I think the big thing is like not having the option of going anywhere. Like yeah. I'm a homebody by trade, but like I think I always enjoyed the option of, oh, I could could go to the Brooklyn Bowl tonight. I could yeah. go out to dinner with friends. And now the option not being available is very like constricting. That is um, but I think the important thing is like focusing on these creative endeavors, like we said, whether it be consuming media or creating art, like you're jamming. Um, I texted Karina not too long ago about, I just picked up my old electric guitar that I haven't picked up in years and my amp, I texted I texted Karina being like, all right, my amp sounds like shit and it's totally blown out. Is there anything I can do? And her answer, I think it's just broken. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was more text. <laughs> I mean, you know, just keep tweaking those knobs and uh, unless you like have a soldering iron or something. <laughs> I was expecting you just to be it. like, all right, yeah, all you gotta do is just pop open the back, cross the red wire with the yellow wire and oh, it's good as new, fam. <laughs> I'm, I'm terrible with all of that. I rely on so many bright folks from my life to make sure I'm on track with my gear. <laughs> um, man, but I'm proud and that's fucking awesome. Does that feel good to get, you know, back into the guitar? Oh, hell yeah. I mean, I had an acoustic in Brooklyn that I always kind of tinker with, but I haven't picked up that electric in ages. Um, and I, as I said, in our prior conversations, um, 
it's super sludgy, like the bass, which is actually uh, the bass on the amp is like super deep as opposed to like, there's like no treble on it. So it's right. just like, it's some real like J Mascus, like Dinosaur Junior vibe. So I think I might be able to lean into it. So I want to play more guitar. I want to make some art. I know, have you guys been doing arts and crafts up there? I've definitely been very much leaning into my visual art endeavors. Yes, yes. And that's been very good. We've very well set up for all of that. And, uh, you know, Marlo was painting. Yeah, we're doing various things of that sort. You know? So, uh, and what, what's the first thing you think you're going to do after this is all over, Karina? Oh, dude, we've been talking about that. I mean, honestly, it, <laughs> I'm just going to fucking suck life up with a straw you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, i am gonna go so buck shit dude oh my god i'm gonna like go to 12 concerts a night eat at like 10 different restaurants per evening i'm gonna go to australia and fiji and the maldives and fuck shit up <laughs> and by that i mean just like enjoy life you know because it really honestly it puts stuff in perspective in such a huge way not to be i'm like being over the top right now but what I mean, the, <laughs> the essence of what I'm saying is, you know, it really makes you think about freedom to exist and to travel and to try things and to be around people and like all the stuff that you would just take kind of for granted, like existing among others. I don't know. It's such a heady thing. So I'm, I'm looking forward to really like, you know, uh, never taking that for granted ever again. And just living so hard. Not that I wasn't, I live fucking hard as shit regardless. Like, I don't know, touring and being around people and like just doing all that type of shit. I consider like, I don't know. I think I live pretty hard, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna triple down. <laughs> and, uh, I, I am so excited slash worried about this new Karina 2.0. That's going to be you have even to a crazy. Million dinners. We're eating, Hell like, yeah, dude. We're going to eat like 48 oysters a day. And then if dude, we I'm so down. Thing, like that's cool. Like it doesn't even matter because we're living so hard. You know what I mean? I am with you, dog. I cannot wait until my first time back at the Brooklyn Bowl. The Brooklyn Bowl being closed is a hole in my heart. It's my home away from home. Well, my home away from home away from home. Um, so I can't wait for that. Yeah, and it's the same thing. I can't wait to just have the freedom to be like, you know what? Like, we're going to go to this, that, and the other thing. Like, it's going to be so much fun. And right. I definitely think uh, this is a slightly permanent situation, but it's not permanent, permanent. So I can't wait to be back in New York going crazy with you Karina yes, um, so and I'm holding you to that dinner we're going to dinner together oh, we're, we're, going we're to doing oysters ridiculous dinner it's gonna be insane dude it's just gonna be insane and that more than one <laughs> <laughs> are you going through seafood withdrawal up there no we're actually pretty well stuck we have a lot of smoked salmon we have like white fish we have like all we're, we're doing good on that front and I think we just placed a Russ and Daughters order or somebody did so I can get my smoked fish on which is good and oysters there you go are Wednesday. What day is it today? Tuesday. Oysters are coming tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys so, have all your important bases covered, you know? Yeah, we're really trying. And Only you know, one I pair of shoes, but oysters getting delivered. <laughs> exactly. The important thing, I mean, of course, not to get serious, but it's just like, you know, stay inside. Don't fuck around. It's not that time, you know, for those of you listening, like I, we're taking this shit real seriously up here and just, you know, we know we're a commune of six, but if one of us gets it, we all get it. And like, we're just staying contained, not being a risk to society right now. And, uh, you know, we got to keep those numbers down and we got to flatten the curve. I'm being super dead serious about it. So I don't know. And the, yeah. you know, we're trying to stay super healthy. We're taking so many vitamins. We're exercising up the wazoo. We are going on hikes nature hikes not my usual vibe as uh you know going to the equinox and uh you know doing pilates and going on the elliptical machine for 45 minutes and then taking a steam no it's not like that we are in the <laughs> karina's really roughing it <laughs> really roughing it on these nature hikes where they're like bugs and things like that and i'm like what is this um but it's good it's a great new thing so uh you know trying to stay physically active otherwise i will turn day into night very quickly if i don't get exercise I don't <laughs> yeah i'm already I mean, in danger of doing like i've been staying up a little, a little late um uh, and waking up a little late so yeah have you what, what's your take on that raf 
Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Um, I am fully locked in to my childhood home. Um, my mother is thrilled. Um, I am truly not leaving. Uh, I think, as you said, it's important to flatten that curve. People our age, you know, I think have the impulse to just think we're invincible and go hit the bars or whatever. But, you know, someone's grandma out there, you don't want to get their grandma sick. Stay in. Chill. Yeah. Read a book. Like, you know, I have a plan to FaceTime with a bunch of friends later. Uh, there's like a bunch of things you can do to kind of get your social fix. Uh, one of which being kind of, you know, FaceTiming with friends as we are right now. Uh, the last kind of thing I want to talk about, Karina, before we put a bow on this thing is let's, let's build our apocalypse festival. Let's, let's pretend like this is the end of the world and you can build one festival with a certain amount of bands. Let's say two headliners and then do like two or three under bill. Who you got? Top of the dome. Top of the dome. My two headliners are Fish and Slayer. Nice. Wow. That honestly, for the end of the world, I just want to quickly like digest that. Perfect. You got the light. You got the darkness. You got the good. You got the evil. You got the yin, the yang. Love it. Continue. I feel like that would really do it for me and maybe only me, but you know, I'm, I think maybe it's an important thing to do. Um, so Fish and Slayer, that's great. And then can I get like how many like support, like I, I'll name a few more. Okay. Ready? Just because you were talking about it, and also one of my favorite bands of all time, Nine Inch Nails has to play this festival. Yes, that's on mine too. Fantastic. Oh my God. Um, very personal level, but whatever. Beck has to play. There's going to okay. be Nine Inch Nails and Beck. And, uh, you know, can I can I get a hologram going? Is that is that a thing I can... It's the end of the world. Let's throw a hologram in there. All right, or not even. You know what? We're going to have the Beastie Boys, but with um, Q-Tip playing the part of MCA. Yeah, but where is it, though? What? Where's your venue? Oh, where is it? Holy yeah. shit. Probably you got to book, book a room, KR. Come on, you're a professional. <laughs> it's probably in this bunker. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Let me think about that. Uh, you know what? It's at the pyramids. It's at the Egyptian pyramids. Sick, Definitely. dude. That's Definitely. sick. What do you got on the set? Okay, I'm going to build off of yours a little bit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scrap Slayer just because I'm not the hugest Slayer fan. And fine, it's my... Fine. So I'm, I'm moving Nine Inch Nails up. So two, two shows each, Fish, Nine Inch Nails. That's what okay. we got so far. Love you know it, I gotta, you, you know I gotta throw my boy Dave in there. It's a little Dave Matthews band. Or Wait. actually, scratch that. I'm gonna do a two set, one Dave Matthews band set, one Dave and Tim set. So we get some emotional acoustics. That's the part where I cry. That's the set I cry at. Then, <laughs> <laughs> then I'm gonna do some widespread panic because if the world's gonna burn, I want Jimmy Herring there and I want him to be shredding on guitar. What else? Then Love I'm going to do some electronic stuff. I'm going to do some Tipper. I'm going to do some Space <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> and then I'm, I'm going to... Sorry, what came after Tipper? I'm sorry. Space Jesus. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Yo, Karina's like judging me so hard right now. You're not invited. <laughs> You're not so invited. How about like Kraftwerk and like uh, Aphex Twin? No? Oh, no, actually, no, no. Actually, Scrap Tipper, Scrap Space Jesus, Daft Punk's getting back together. Daft Punk on there. That, I mean, I'm not, no disrespect, but that really sends it home for me, Rob. It I sends it home. You know. And you know what, Karina? You know what I'm going to do? You know who's playing late night every night? Karina yeah. Reichman. The, the oh! namesake Karina Reichman project. No, she didn't. No, she didn't. Yo, Doing three late. Yeah, dude. The queen of the castle. Hey. The queen. Like, I'm going to have... Oh, and then I would think I'd probably just do some, like, just some stray ones for the homies. I would have Andy Frasco there. I would have Spafford there. I would have... Who else? Fuck it. Maybe some pigeons. I would do a bunch of, like, of our, like, the homies. Like, the, the kind of mid-level jam bands just going through all day jam. I like jam. that a lot. I like that a lot. I think that's out. And for venue? Hmm. I got to do the garden, man. Madison Square Garden. Or, or if it's outdoors, I would do uh, the Arrington, Virginia, the farm that Lockin's on. Because that's good. That's good vibes. That's family right there. Oh, my God. That's close to home. That's close to home. For those of you just uh, listening, uh, the crown I'm wearing just fell off. So don't worry about it. Um, yeah. And I then also you're... one other band, I would have Melt play there. Shout yeah! out to Marlo. Who's in the room. Shout out to Melt. <laughs> they have a new single dropping this Friday. It's called Shy. We're looking forward to it very much around here. Hey! Hey! And Rob, yeah. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, I feel like my devices are about to die. Okay. Well, 
Let's quickly say goodbye. Uh, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in for this particularly strange episode. You can subscribe to Relics, re uh, relics.com slash tame. Tame Impala is on the, the cover. It's a wonderful issue. Uh, uh, you can follow us on Instagram at 3 from the 7 Email us at rapandkarina at gmail.com. 3 from the 7 is brought to you by Relics Media Group. Our producer, who has been on this call, silent, Will Schwerd. Hashtag Schwerd up. Shout out to the man. Karina, send us home. Raph. These are uncertain times. And in uncertain times, you really find out who you really are. And you know what? You are my podcast wife, bitch. That's right. And we love you. We Put love a you ring on it. I will. I'm going to buy you a ring when this is all over. And we're going to have a <laughs> sweet ass ceremony. Uh, anyway, I love you very much. And I really hope that you are doing well in your isolation. I hope everyone out there is taking this one day at a time. Don't get too hystericized. Don't take it not seriously. You know what I mean? There's a nice middle ground there. And I hope everybody is just finding peace and not getting too strung out and taking it seriously and being kind to one another. Because these are fucked times. There's no question about it. And we're dealing as best we can. So sending love and light from us. Thank you so much for listening. Yeah. Bye, everybody.